Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to Coffee and Headlines. This is our daily get-together live here on Facebook every morning, 1030, every single day of the week, where we gather and we take a look at headlines, comments, questions, stories, ideas, suggestions on how to have an awesome life in Puerto Vallarta as an English-speaking community of locals and a few uh, curious tourists and visitors that join our community on a daily basis or frequently. If you're new to these broadcasts, my name is Paco, and you can let us know that you're new by writing the word new in your comment. And also, if you have important questions that you'd like to share with us, that you'd like for us to discuss during the broadcast, it helps a lot if you add the letter Q to your comment. Everything that we discussed is shared after the broadcast in what we call the show notes. And the best way to stay tuned with upcoming broadcasts, if you want to be reminded, is to hit the like or the subscribe button, depending on whether you're watching on Facebook or YouTube, so that you can be notified whenever we're coming back. Today is an important day because we have a lot of announcements from uh, our governor after the emergency button, which ends today. But before we do that, let me take a quick look at who's here and who's not. We always like to say hello to a few people that join us on a regular basis. Christopher, I haven't seen you in a while. It's great to see you. I understand that you are um, having a two-year anniversary sometime in the near future. Maybe you can let us know. Christopher, of course, is the owner of Chachalaca Bar. And uh, it is nice to know how quickly fast uh, time passes. I mean, two years, that's crazy. Um, let's see. Raymond is baking bread in Versailles. Excellent. And uh, who else is here? Uh, boom, pam, 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 pam. New Jersey's in the house. Thanks to Ricky Stein. Thank you very much. And um, -da 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 -da. Logan's going to be a tourist. He's going to be on a boat, he told me early this morning. I am a little envious, but in a good way. We all deserve to behave like tourists from time to time, particularly when we are working, when we are full-time uh, workers here in Puerto Vallarta. There's a lot of people that come here to retire, but there's a huge community of English-speaking folk here that come here to continue working, and uh, and I love that part of this community. Uh, so I think we're all here uh, on pins and needles waiting for this news today. Well, we might as well get started. Um, yeah, let's do it. Boom. Okay, so this morning I was getting ready for today's broadcast, and... Um, and of course, uh, Governor Alfaro dropped a 30-minute live video, so I took very quick notes on what he said. Um, and uh, this, of course, has to do with the fact that the emergency button adventure or phase or whatever you want to call it ends today. And to cut to the chase, it was good. It was good. Uh, the governor started by saying and by repeating and emphasizing that every decision that has been made has been backed by specialists and for the common good. This is our top priority, he said. Needless to say, the governor must be getting a lot of flack. Um, flack or slack? Flack. I think it's flack when it's bad. I think it's slack. The governor's been criticized <laughs> a lot for these moves, of course. How could he not? But the governor several times was very specific in reminding us that, hey, we're all going through this for the first time in a long time, I mean a century, 
And this is the first time that people are having to make these decisions. At the beginning of his address, he said, you know, nothing could have prepared me for this, but I was prepared when I started become, being a governor to make the important decisions that need to be made, even when they're difficult decisions to be made for the better and for the common good. So he said that the results are encouraging, that the emergency button was successful, that there is room for improvement moving forward as we learn about the disease and its behavior, just as the rest of the world. Um, he reminded us that the measures taken today have effects 15 days later. And we've known this all along. This is due to the nature of the virus. So we are going to be talking about early mobility results, but we won't have all the information about uh, the virus's behavior until later on in the, man in the month, and I will give you a specific date. Um, he showed a number of graphs and charts that I didn't capture, except for one that I'll show you in a second, um, in which we saw that it was one day after the emergency button implementation that the highest number of cases was registered. That's when the disease peaked. And then starting on that day, the number of active cases has decreased, and now we are in a very clear downward trend of active cases. I think this is probably a good moment to jump into this graph so that you can take a look at <clears throat> what I mean. What you're looking at here is three weeks, week number 44, week number 45, and week number 46. 46 being the current week, that is this week that we're living in. You can see that two weeks ago, um, the number of active cases were on a definite upwards trend. And we ended up two weeks ago with 4,523 active cases in the whole state. Last week, once the emergency button had already been implemented, we started seeing how the number of active cases started decreasing. And we began this week with a definite downward trend of current active cases as of this moment. So the numbers are going down. This is all good. Let me go back to my notes. Um, something else that um, he mentioned is that the positivity rate has decreased, as we can see through the chart. And this is important because when it drops, the likelihood of more cases decreases. He also mentioned that hospitalization rate is also going down, the number of hospital beds that are being used. And then there was a lot of conversation about mobility. And mobility is easier to discuss at this point in time because it is measured in real time. He showed a graph where we could see that Chiapas is the only state in the whole country with lower mobility than Jalisco. And we, he was very happy to announce, the governor, that during the emergency button, mobility was diminished by, or was decreased rather, by 80% on weekends and 30% on weekdays. Let us remember that the whole purpose of the emergency button is to reduce the number of options given to us as citizens to get from one point to another, therefore urging us to stay home. That was the whole purpose of this important exercise. Um, he acknowledged that there were failures that took place in terms of public transportation, particularly in larger cities like Guadalajara and Puerto Vallarta, but he also realized that this uh, means that there is room for improvement should, should we go into an exercise similar to this in the future. So the bottom line is the whole exercise was worth it. It allows for forward steps in the economic activation process, but it is not over. Until there is no vaccine, the governor said, we will have to continue to monitor the trends of the virus so that we need to contain it if it ever gets too high again. So our commitment is not over. Today is the last day for the emergency button. Starting tomorrow, there will be a transition phase, which they're calling Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Now that's a very original um, 
<laughs> name for a transition phase. And there will be indications as to what that means later on today. So things go back to what it was like starting tomorrow before the button. But, you know, I was having a conversation with some friends yesterday and I was concerned and the governor talked about this over the fact that people might think that starting tomorrow it's over and we can just go totally nuts. Quite the contrary. Uh, the governor emphasized that it is very, very important that starting tomorrow, we don't go nuts. And even though the results of the emergency button were successful, that did not eradicate the virus. That did not mean anything other than the fact that we know for certain that the more mobility we have, particularly at nighttime, because nighttime was the part of the day that was most curtailed, uh, the more likely is the virus to continue spreading. So the governor is urging everyone to stay at home as much as we can. And the same things that have been discussed and recommended from, from the very beginning, wearing face masks, safe distancing, avoiding crowds. If you get into a place that is crowded, you don't need to be there. Just turn around and leave to exercise our personal responsibility. He said the governor, the government cannot make you do these things, washing our hands and acting quickly on any symptoms that you may show. Uh, he also stressed the importance of measuring oxygen levels. Uh, this is not the first time that I see a suggestion here or there that we should all purchase one of those oxygen meter uh, devices. I assume they are sold at Costco. I don't even know. Um, so specific guidelines for this weekend will be presented today, this afternoon. And then Monday morning, after the weekly uh, meeting that he has with his health committee, the measures for the upcoming uh, months will be announced. And the University of Guadalajara, which is where the science team has been working from, will put together an entire report of the results of the emergency button 14 days. And that, re uh, that report will be presented on uh, November 26. Of course, this will allow for that 15-day incubation period that allows us to really take a look at the entire cycle after um, the numbers have come back. So again, um, it was a great thing. Now, here's the part that I take personally, and I invite you to consider, you can consider or not. Um, we continue to see people right in our face that um, either don't follow safe distance guidelines or don't wear a face mask or or are just not doing what we think we all should be doing to, um, to get beyond this as quickly as possible. I think the government is well aware of this. I mean, the governor is very satisfied and grateful to the vast majority of people that follow the guidelines and the results show themselves in the numbers. So we are going to continue to be overwhelmed by things that shouldn't be happening when they happen in front of our face, you know? You know what I mean? I mean, when you see like three people in front of you or walking towards you without a face mask, we think everything's going to end. And I think that's where we have the choice of either getting really nutty about what we're seeing with our own eyes or simply sighing, walking around it and covering our face and taking care of ourselves and letting the numbers do the talking. There's always going to be people that do, no fo that do not follow the guidelines and for better or worse, that's just the nature of the beast. The end. So let me take a quick look at your comments um, and questions so that we can move on with the rest of the broadcast. Let's see. Oh, and hello to the 222 of you that are here. Thank you very much for joining us live. This is Coffee and Headlines. We try to make sense of all this stuff um, in a cheerful, positive way and without getting political or inflammatory because um, we slap each other when we get political or inflammatory. <laughs> Let's see who are, we are looking at. Um, mm, 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 mm. Safety first. Thank you, Governor Alfaro. Yes, absolutely. I feel, 
I feel in good hands. I really do. I really do. Uh, Miha chimes in on what I am talking about. You know, it's not going back to normal because until there's a vaccine, this is the new normal. We're going to continue having to take very good care of ourselves in terms of how we carry ourselves out and about and so forth and so on. Uh, uh, William drops a, a cynical bomb. Thank you very much. Tell that to the unmasked hordes hanging out in the street. Well, again, William, you know, you have the choice. We all have the choice of getting cynical and neurotic. I'm not saying that you are. I'm not saying that you are. This is not about you. But we have the choice to either let our days be disturbed by these visions or know that we ourselves are doing the right thing. I personally, I'm choosing not to get too overwhelmed by the bunch of idiots that are out there not following the guidelines, just because I'm concerned about my well-being, honestly. Uh, let's see. Yes, Logan, you're right on the money. You're right on the money. I mean, it is our choice to walk into a place and say, okay, this feels like a place where I feel safe and this feels like a place that is doing the right thing or not. You know, it's a matter of just walking in and if you don't like what you see, just turn around and leave. Turn around and leave. Um, thank you very much for that tip, Chalk. I mean, it's good to know that Amazon has them at a better price. Of course, Amazon Mexico and Amazon US do excellent uh, deliveries here in town. Uh, uh, Heather asks, did Alfaro specifically talk much about the bars? No, he didn't at all because he didn't have to. He didn't have to, Heather. And let me explain that. Again, the biggest reduction in mobility happened after 8, 8.30, because everything was closed after 8.30. So anybody uh, could deduce from that that a lot of what's going on at during the nighttime has a lot to do with the number of cases. Now, there was mobility during the daytime as well, but it was also reduced. So was it necessary for him to talk about bars and clubs? I don't think so. I don't think so. Um, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Did the governor state our business hours to go back to normal tomorrow? That's a question. Again, the governor said that the Friday, Saturday, and Sunday phase guidelines will be announced later on today. So I cannot tell you. I can tell you that the emergency button ends today. I can tell you that with all certainty. But I cannot tell you what exactly is going to happen tomorrow, Saturday, and Sunday because it has not been announced by the governor. It will be announced this afternoon. Uh, let's see, let's see, Margaret asks, so are restaurants and bars open later, not closing at 8.30 p.m.? Again, um, everybody's supposed to close at 8.30 tonight, just because this is the last day of emergency button. Starting tomorrow, we won't know until this afternoon. Let's see what else we have. Do, 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 do. Uh, 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 uh. My ma, 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 ma. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Don't mind me if I sing. Okay. Oh, good. We're uh, we're at the end of your comment. So let me continue then with the rest of the broadcast. Thank you very much for hanging on with it with me today. Uh, as far as this is concerned, of course, I'll keep my eyes open for the announcement that the governor makes this afternoon, and we will talk about it uh, tomorrow morning, as as usual. Uh, moving on with the rest of the headlines that I have, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, the CDC in the United States, has published a brand new scientific brief, an updated um, brief on the, on the importance of face masks. The bottom line of, um, of, um, of the face mask uh, brief, or, or, the, or the, the, the new version of this, is that when you wear a face mask, you're not only protecting others from your spit, you're also protecting yourself. So I'm going to leave you with the um, with a bookmark for this so that you can enjoy it. Um, Amanda asks, question, is there a translation of the announcement this morning available anywhere? Amanda, baby, you're looking at it. Moving right along. <laughs> um, actually, I should I should qualify that. 
Trisha Lyman may actually do a more thorough translation in her um, in her Facebook group. But as far as I know, you are looking at it at to this date or to uh, up to this moment. Uh, this headline is gruesome and pisses me off because there is someone, there is a woman in Puerto Vallarta driving around with the knowledge that she ran over a cyclist and killed them, killed him and then ran away. This happened yesterday in Fluvial. Uh, this is very unfortunate. A Canadian cyclist, 70-year-old man by the name of Jim Nyby, was, uh, was run over by a driver who was seen spending too much time on her cell phone and apparently she ran him over and then just um, just flew away. She ran away from the scene. So yeah, I can't possibly imagine having to go through life knowing that you ran over someone and uh, and you did not do anything. I just hope that they caught their li her license plate and they're going to be able to find her and do something about this. This is just horrible. Um, <clears throat> in other news, uh, you, we've talked about the floodings in the state of Chiapas. Now 19 municipalities have been declared um, uh, as a state of emer in a state of emergency. Uh, again, Chiapas is far away from Puerto Vallarta. We bring this up because Chiapas is going to need a lot of help uh, to recover from these um, the, the river that uh, that went overboard, um, overflew, overflown, the overflown river. Oh, darn it. My English is just not working this morning. Anyhow, I mentioned the Chiapas news just in case you hear of local efforts to make things better over there if you run into anybody that is collecting food or something or other. If it is within your hands and your ability to help, I'm sure it would be much appreciated over there. Let me take a quick, quick look at some questions you may have here. Uh, la, da, 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 da. I love it. Can you give me details about the transition phase? I cannot, Shelly, because the transition phase has just been announced. The details will be available for all of us to share this afternoon. I will be talking about this tomorrow morning. Uh, keyword is choice. Choice is so important. Absolutely, Santiago, I cannot agree more with you. We choose to go where we choose to go, and we choose to be responsible for our own lives without blaming others. That is a personal choice. Uh, da, 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 dim. Bum, bum, ba, dum, bum, 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 bum. Amanda, baby. <laughs> uh, that's the whole idea, Joe. We all try to come here and smile because sometimes the news are not pleasant. Uh, oh, I am so sorry to hear this, Bob. Um, um, I'm sorry for your loss. Again, I just, you know... Sometimes I can be a distracted driver, and sometimes I've wondered, you know, what would I do if something horrible like that happened to me? I wouldn't, I, I don't, I could not run away. I could just not, I could not run away. Um, let's see, let's see. Okay, so we're done with the solid hard news. Now let's jump into some leisurely stuff, including song number three of our three deadly Mexican song series. Bam! But as always, we begin with the weather. It's 26 degrees Celsius. It feels like 28 degrees right now, just like yesterday at 78 degrees Fahrenheit. Humidity is high. What's up, humidity? You are cheating on us. It's 81% humidity. Um, I love the comment from the weather today. It says, that cloud looks like a baby sloth wearing a hat. <laughs> Uh, let's see, the weather forecast for today, or the simplified version of it is, it's going to be humid and mostly cloudy through the day, high temperature of 30, a little warmer than yesterday. Tomorrow, Friday, humid and uh, humid through the day, high of 29, and Saturday, humid through the day, high of 29. Now, I want to tell you about something really awesome that you are most likely not aware of. And this is uh, my friend uh, Melissa Castillo's project. It's called Plataforma 322. Plataforma 322 is a wonderful performance space here in Colonia Versalles, where uh, Melissa is, um, is a contemporary dancer. She, her contemporary dance is her thing. And she teaches and she uses her space 
Uh, it's a multi-purpose space where uh, we've seen plays performed, we've seen, we've seen music performed, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And Melissa Castillo organizes an annual uh, festival called Spontaneous. Well, actually, it's called Espontaneo, which is the name in Spanish. And this is a festival that started where she would invite creators to just do something creative and spontaneous. Well, Espontaneo has blossomed into a bona fide um, performance art festival here in Puerto Vallarta. And, um, and it's coming up. It's starting this Sunday. And I want to show you this because Melissa published all this information. Of course, she published it in Spanish because this is mostly uh, geared towards the local audiences, the local Spanish speaking audiences. But you would probably want to know more about this. And this is why I'm going to tell you a little bit about what's going on. Um, there is such a thing as, for example, it starts on Sunday with a performance by um, a, com a dance company from Saltillo in the northern part of the country. And this is going to be performed at Plataforma 322, which is this space here in Versailles. And it is free. It is going to take place on Sunday. Then on Monday, there is another dance company. This one is from both from Mazatlán and from Puerto Vallarta. So there's some local people involved. And this is going to be in Colonia La Aurora in, uh, in front of a building. So this is going to be an outdoor performance. Again, it's going to be free of charge. Tuesday, another performance at uh, Plataforma 322. This is by a dance company from Querétaro. On Wednesday, there's going to be another performance. This one from a dance company from Saltillo. This is going to be at Los Mangos Library. Um, then another performance on Thursday at Plataforma 322. Uh, another one on Friday. So this whole week is going to be performance after performance, most of them taking place at Plataforma. And, um, and it, is, it is something that you, as English-speaking locals, may want to go and take a look at. Uh, again, this is the way culture and performing arts are manifesting themselves as produced by local Spanish-speaking uh, producers. Uh, of course, this is dance. So if you go, it, it's not like you need to understand the language. So I will be leaving you um, a bookmark with all this information. I will be showing you where Plataforma 322 is located in Versailles, uh, so that you can consider these performances. Um, again, all the information is available in Spanish, but who cares? It's all free. It's free. And again, if you get to Plataforma, I know that they're going to be watching their safe distancing very, very closely. Plataforma 322 has both an indoor space and an outdoor space. So for all I know, some of the performances might take place outside. So again, if you get there, and you think, oh, it's too crowded for me. Well, there are awesome restaurants <laughs> surrounding Plataforma 322 because we know that Versailles is full of wonderful restaurants. Um, let me see. Do I stop for questions? Uh, no. Let me continue with a couple of extra headlines because there's still a few things to cover. Um, yet another headline about, um, about this new Vidanta cruise ship that is going to go from Puerto Vallarta to Mazatlán. They have a tentative date of January 19, uh, and we get to see more specs about the boat. And I took um, a second this morning to go look for the official website. And yes, there is now an official website. It's called vidantacruises.com. And I'm going to share this with you once we get done. And um, But there's no, there's no specific information yet as to what these cruises are, are going to be about, how much they're going to cost, et cetera, et cetera. But in case you want to hop on a boat, that I understand is now docked here at the Maritime Terminal. I haven't seen it in person, but if you want to go on a smaller cruise ship uh, from here to Mazatlan and back, this is the place to go and gather information. My next headline is a little geeky, but it might concern some of you. Google Photos, which has been allowing free storage um, of our photographs online, is ending this middle of 2021. I'm letting, the, I'm letting you know this so that you can keep that in mind and you can make all the necessary measures that you need to take if you've been using Google Photos to store your images. It's a little geeky, but I thought you would want to know. Um, also, oh my God, Akhenaten, 
the wonderful opera by Philip Glass is going to be streamed on Saturday, a Saturday at uh, 6.30 in the afternoon. And this is a glorious, a glorious opera. This is the Met production that is going to be streamed this Saturday afternoon. And in case you want to know more about it, uh, there is this beautiful um, documentary or, or, or explainer video produced by, by Vox, uh, by my beloved Estelle Caswell. If I could ever be an, ex an explainer video producer like Estelle Caswell, I would die and go to heaven with a big smile. How an opera gets made takes a very quick, insightful look at this particular opera, so you may want to watch it. Uh, and hopefully this will pique your curiosity enough to watch a broadcast on Saturday. That is my most sincere wish. And what else do we have? Oh, I have a curious headline, but I'm going to leave that until the end. Let me very quickly take a look at your comments before we dive into our final Mexican song of our three-part series. Let's see. Isn't tequila a form of vitamin? I love that. I don't know how we got into that topic, but I like it very much. Um, <clears throat> da, 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 da. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Ah. I don't see any cues. Oh, I see a cue. Is this a question? Uh, is what a question? Jorge, I, I, I'm lost. I'm lost. What was the question? I don't see the question. Um, one thing they do say on the Vedanta Cruz site is that you can combine land and sea itineraries. We'll have to see how this works. Uh, Jaime asks a question. Future story idea is the international charro event that will be taking place at the end of January at Arena Vallarta. This is uh, an event that happens every year. Let's hope that the International Charro Festival will happen this year as in years past. Um, and now, because we... Uh, what's going on with cartel? Did I miss something? If you guys don't add cues, I don't know if the questions are addressed to me. So if you're talking about cartel, fill me in, please. Um, let me get into songs of uh, a deadly song mode here because I promised you we would wrap this series today <clears throat> and then we can come back to your final questions in a second. Ah, there is a question. Um, I have been warned not to go out because the cartel has lost control and more people are coming in to take back control. Um, I, if I knew where this information comes from, Jorge, then I would know to take it seriously or not. Again, what we try to do here uh, in, at Coffee and Headlines, and you know this quite well, is we try to uh, focus on sources of information that are credible. When I see things like, I have been warned, well, congratulations, but you have been warned by who? And, um, oh, it was, Ian, it was Ian Sterling, uh, that asks, are stories like these true? Ian, again, it depends on who you hear them from. Here at Coffee and Headlines, and I don't believe I've seen you before. I know who you are because we've hung out at Hotel Mercurio. Uh, here at Coffee and Headlines, we try to pay attention to credible sources and try to steer away from hearsay just because a lot of hearsay is precisely that. It's simply hearsay. Um are there good social distancing and protocols in the communities on the South Shore? Have you been to uh, Las Animas, Yelapa, et cetera, et cetera? I have been to Las Animas, and, uh, and I think people are, are, are a little bit more relaxed in places like that simply because you are there's more physical distance between people. Needless to say, uh, when I took the boat, there were some people that were um, uh, wearing face masks. Other not. Others were not. So, again... Terry, it becomes a personal choice. You know, if you get to Yelapa and you see that there's a group of 5, 10, 15, 20 people in front of you that are not wearing face masks, just turn around and head back or go another way. It's it's difficult to monitor all these communities without actually being there. Uh, okay, so three deadly Mexican songs. Now, for real, this is it. Boom. Here we are. <laughs> um Part number three is 
tongue in cheek. Let us review a little bit of what we've been discussing. We know that in part one, we saw Paquita, la del barrio, telling us men are scum with her beloved iconic song, uh, Two-Legged Rat. And we laughed through that. And then we continue with part two, Women Are Scum. And we heard this um, very uplifting song by Grupo Pesado called uh, I Hope You Die. And now we, mo we move to uh, what I'm calling Tongue and Cheek with a third song that is the least deadly of them all. In fact, it is, it is quite endearing when you get to the chorus. And this comes to us by way of the one of uh, Jalisco's favorite children, Alejandro Fernandez. Alejandro Fernandez was born in our state. His father, Vicente Fernandez, is the most iconic and revered mariachi singer in our country. Of course, his son, Alejandro, we've seen him around. He has properties here in Puerto Vallarta. And I dare say I have a personal, very brief story about Alejandro Fernandez. The first night that I arrived in Puerto Vallarta 19 years ago, I knew no one but one person. And this one person invited me to a welcome dinner with a bunch of people that I didn't even know. This is my first night in Puerto Vallarta. It was at a restaurant called De Santos. Marsha Blondin was there. You know Marsha. She writes locally and she has she creates beautiful, um, beautiful um, necklaces and stuff. Um, and she was a present at this dinner. So we're sitting in this table and um, and all of a sudden there's a big hullabaloo at the entrance of the restaurant. And who would walk in but Alejandro Fernandez and his posse. Now, I knew of Alejandro Fernandez's music. Uh, from when I was living in Boston. And I adored his music and continue to enjoy his voice quite quite a bit. So sitting my first night having dinner in Puerto Vallarta with people that I barely know, that I'm getting to know, and all of a sudden, Alejandro Fernandez walking in, I said to myself, Paco, this is a sign that you came to the right place. And that is my very brief but very personal story with Alejandro Fernandez. So now, Going back to song number three, which is the least deadly of them all, this song is called Matalas, which means kill them. Now, how is these less deadly than before? Well, it boils down to who wrote the song. The song was composed by Manuel Toscano, and Manuel Toscano happens to be the same composer that wrote the first song that we heard, Rata de Dos Patas, Paquita la del Barrio song. And in fact, Manuel Toscano happens to have written a bunch of these Men Are Scum songs for Paquita la del Barrio and Lupita D'Alessio. He's written songs for a number of, of, of important singers in Mexico's uh, list of performers. And... Um, and I'm going to say something that is completely unfair and biased. I figured it takes a gay man to write such powerful lyrics that are about men. And it turns out that Manuel Toscano is very, very straight. He had eight children. He has eight kids. And he is simply a man that is very talented with his choice of words. And we admire that from any composer slash lyricist. So let's take a look at what this song is about, and then we come back to um, our, our final questions of the segment of today. So this is Matalas, or Kill Them. The first verse begins with, My friend, what's the matter? You're crying, surely because of lady troubles. There isn't a mortal blow for men worse than crying and being despised by them. This is the first verse. Second verse says, my friend, I will give you good advice. If you wish to enjoy pleasures with them, with women, get a gun if you like, or a dagger if you prepare, and become a lady killer. So this is starting to look at very, at a very gruesome situation. Go, go kill ladies. But he flips the song during the choruses the following way. Kill them. Kill them with an overdose of tenderness. Smother them with kisses and sweets. Overwhelm them with your craziness. And that's a difficult phrase to uh, translate because crazy... First of all, the, the song in Spanish says contagiar, which means in English contagiar has a bad 
connotation. You spread a virus, te contagias de un virus. So in Spanish, the word contagiar also means to to spread or overwhelm something with what you're feeling. And then craziness in Spanish is locuras. Uh, again, locura or being crazy can be a very negative connotation, but it can also be a very positive, poetic, wacky, wonderful connotation. So overwhelm them with your craziness. And then the next part of the chorus says, kill them with flowers, with songs. Don't fail them, for there is no woman in this world that can resist that can resist a sweet gesture. Then it continues, wake them up with a serenade, bring them flowers on an ordinary day. It doesn't matter if she's ungrateful. After all, you are not a saint yourself. And that is <laughs> Matalas, which is a beautiful, beautiful uh, uh, mariachi song. In fact, when I talked to my dear friend Paul of Hotel Mercurio yesterday, um, uh, that we were going to be discussing this song. Paul, who is um, an English-speaking and uh, Spanish-speaking person, um, started singing the song. I mean, the song is extremely, extremely popular and really, really fun and beautiful. Needless to say, when Alejandro Mer uh, Fernandez came out with this song, there were a handful of feminists out there that said, well, wait a second, this business of suggesting that you kill people, um, they were a little, you know, ruffled but i mean this is not any more harmful than roberta flax killing me softly with his song when you come when it comes down to it so this is the end of my three-part um deadly mexican song series i don't know why i chose to start with this but i've started a list of really fun wonderful inspiring songs from mexico and other countries in latin america that i want you to get to know because 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 why not? We're here. We're in a Spanish-speaking country, and we're learning um, more and more, hopefully, about how we feel, how we think. I no, we're done with that. And that is the end of that. Let me take a quick look at your comments. Excuse me. Before I uh, <clears throat> give you my final headline of the day. Uh, let's see. I read it on Facebook, folks, so it must be true. I love that. Uh, let's see. Consider the source. Thank you very much for supporting that. Are there any recommendations on nightclubs and karaoke bars? Um, well, there are. It, it, that's a broad question because there's all kinds of nightclubs, Kelly. And there's quite a few karaoke bars in town. I'm not a big karaoke person. Uh, myself, I know that uh, La Regadera is very popular. It is in El Centro. I think there's a place called Cookie also in Emiliano Zapata that does karaoke. But again, the, the singing is not my thing. Oh, I see that, that Joey has, um, has chimed in on that. Thank you very much. Did I take that picture with Alejandro? No, I didn't. When I saw him, I saw him sitting with his friends at the other table, and I came very close, very close to walking to his table and saying, you know what, I mean, you just, you were my sign that I moved to Puerto Vallarta, and it was a good thing. And then I thought, oh my God, he's going to think I'm crazy, and he's going to just go like, what the fuck, like our favorite little parrot. So I never dared. I never dared to approach him. Uh, let's see. La -da 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 -da. The composer has a romantic heart. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's a beautiful thing. You know, when we craft something with words and music, uh, I admire the composer because, again, you would think that the song is harmful and deadly, but it, it turns out to be a tongue-in-cheek, beautiful love song, which I love very much. Uh, la -da 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 -da. Okay, so we're at the end of our comments. So I leave you with... Um, oh, Oh my goodness, what is wrong with a macho panzón? I don't know where that came from, Paul, but um, I like macho panzones myself sometimes. The last headline that I have to share with you is a quirky one because it has a lot to do with the current mindset of uh, who we consider a hero and why. We reported a few weeks ago on Columbus Day that this important statue in Mexico City of Christopher Columbus had been removed for cleaning and maintenance, and it has not been returned to its rightful place. Now, there are some people that have filed a demanda, a legal action against this Mexico City, 
because they're like, well, where is our Christopher Columbus statue? And Claudia Scheinbaum, uh, who's the mayor of Mexico City, uh, talked about this on a short video. And uh, and she said, well, you know, we had scheduled to clean the sculpture, the, the statue, and it's going to come back, et cetera, et cetera. But while we're at it, given the fact that we're going to have an important global celebration next year in Mexico where we will celebrate the foundation of Tenochtitlan and a couple of other important milestones. Um, okay, we will show the parrot in a second, <laughs> Sean. Give me one moment. Um, uh, you know, she, inv she invited people to reflect on this business that um, Columbus discovered America. And what Claudia Scheinbaum said, and it's actually very true, is that America was here. We were already here. Nobody discovered anything because America was existed. It did not need to be discovered. Uh, and the thought of somebody discovering something is it, now it has all kinds of cultural implications that we didn't used to have before. So will the sculpture come back, the statue of Christopher Columbus to, to that uh, particular landmark in Paseo de la Reforma in Mexico City? We don't know. We don't know. So let us, um, okay, you want the parrot? Let's find the parrot. Why not? Boom. <laughs> we love that parrot. So with that said, we are at the end of Copy and Headlines today. Let me see if there's some final comments. Uh, Jorge asks, have I heard a song from Beatriz Adriana? I'm going, oh, I'm Macho Panzón. Let me look for that. That's where the comment came from. I will look for that song. I love your suggestions as always. And I love spending time with you guys every morning. I am so grateful for this opportunity. As always, I am uh, so grateful that you're here and grateful that you talk about Coffee and Headlines grateful for your support. We have new members, new supporters, and we're working on new ideas of how to create special perks so that you can uh, find ways to appreciate the value of what we're doing here. We are approaching an important period in which we're going to do all series of polls and, uh, and surveys just to find out what the community here wants to know more about. Um, so we can continue to create content that you're happy with, that you look forward to enjoying every day. So we're going to continue to move forward. And between now and the next time we get together, please stay happy, stay kind, stay calm, stay in touch, stay patient, stay safe, and follow the guidelines. I will see you again soon. Bye-bye.